Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are continuing from yesterday's video. It was titled, It's Worse Than You Think, and it's getting even worse. Watch this. I have a comment from last night. I also have an email that pertains to this comment from the same gentleman. Verified after seeing this. I decided to verify my PWN cable. Several months back, I bought a used PWN 1.5 kilowatt non-ATC spindle package from someone upgrading to the ATC. I just went and took the PWN cable apart for inspection. This cable is direct VFD to spindle, no pigtail. That's good. The cable appears to be single braided shield. That's not good. All spindle cables, AC, DC, in any size, should be utilizing double shielded cable to mitigate both forms of EMI in both high and low frequency, utilizing tin braided copper as an external shield along with an internal shield of mylar foil. And then we should also see a shield drain which allows for easier termination so we can once again terminate to ground to dissipate EMI. That being said, it says here, cable appears to be single braided shield stripped back on both ends with no shield drain on either end, no capitalized. Once again, how important is this? Because I always get one guy that'll be like, well, it really doesn't matter. No, it matters. No shield drain on either end means that you are dealing with a cable that's just that, a cable. It doesn't matter what shields are internal if there's no way to dissipate EMI. And the only way to do that properly is by attaching a shield drain. In this case, it would be a shield drain if you have to mount one uh, manually using solder and flux, you would hit it to your uh, tin braided copper and you would drain that properly to a ground bus. He's saying on either end of that cable, no shield drain is present, essentially leaving you with just a cable and it does not allow for mitigation of EMI. Now. First and foremost, I want to ask all the guys out there who've invested with this and bought these type of spindles from this company, how pissed would you be? I would be livid. I'd be like, well, I'm trusting this guy to give me the product that he's claiming he produced and I didn't get it right because you essentially just bought a cable that has internal shielding. That's it. Let's continue. Uh, pick available wire is, and he goes into detail about the wire that's used, meaning the cable, it's 18 gauge. Now guys, I never recommend using 18 gauge. Anyone that understands voltage drop understands the longer the cable is, the more voltage drop is present. Of course, lower gauge wires are always going to give you a better resistance to voltage drop simply because they're thicker. When we see 18 gauge, that's really small. Remember, the numbers instigate higher numbers, meaning larger numbers when we're dealing with gauge of wire, instigates smaller wiring. And I'm saying smaller diameter. 16 gauge is what I always recommend. I've sold it now for well over a decade. It works extremely well. It's very resilient at these applications, once again, for activity. So once again, that cable is active in your cable chain, you're fine, and you're going to have very, very minimal voltage drop on top of the fact it handles amps much better than 18 gauge. Let's continue. Um, he goes over here and he says, update. I checked their plastic VFD enclosure and all the aircraft connectors are floating and the spindle cable is only grounded by the ground pin common with the AC ground pin on the Euro connector. This wire is not connected to the braid in the cable. Once again, not being capitalized. I mean, what are we talking about here, guys? Essentially, he's telling you, and I will show you pictures to confirm this that the cable on both ends has no shield drain attached and nothing is attached to that ground if it's even present in the VFD, which I don't believe it is. I think they're just connecting it to, like he said, that Euro connector if it's using one. However that goes, I would have to see it. Um, but my comment to this gentleman, well, I'm glad you checked and I'm sorry you paid for an incorrectly built cable. I say that a lot, guys, and it is, it's really sad. Single shielded cable is in best practice for these applications, and when no shield drain attached to the cable's braid makes the shielding useless against EMI mitigation, this is fact. If there's no ground bus inside the VFD enclosure, or ground lead going to a verified ground terminal on the VFD itself with the cable shield drain, then this for sure isn't best practice as it's essentially a regular cable as I stated. I received your email as well with the cables pictures and will be showing you what you receive or showing what you receive to make others aware. This is exactly what I suspected as it's impossible to have quality control when purchasing bulk built 
cables overseas. Once they received in-house, a company would have to literally disassemble each one to verify they are built correctly, and the man hours to do that simply isn't practical, which is why I never purchased them pre-made, as there's too much possibility for errors for my clients. Let me ask you all a logical question, okay? I've been doing this as far as assembling double-shielded cables now for well over a decade, okay? Everything from purchasing in bulk, because anybody who understands cable knows you don't buy small amounts of cable. You buy large amounts. I mean, it's a large investment. You're sitting on the shelf. Do you really think I didn't think of that? Do you really think that this guy was the pioneer? Like, no shit? Come on. Let's stop the shit. Let's be real. If I thought the quality was there, there is no way in hell I'd be sitting there for two hours. And that takes me two hours to build the cable to where I feel I would accept it. So if it takes me to do it, and you've seen my work, I don't hide it. Once again, I'm proud to say all of my work, you can look on my channel, there's my resume. No bullshit. No, hey, I did this, I work for this company. No, I did it. Here it is. Oh, you work for NASA? Here it is. Oh, you work for Hesperos? Here it is. Oh, you work for uh, Works Holsters? Here it is. Oh, you've worked with Special Forces? Here he is. Where's his? These guys all know how to film videos, but all of a sudden, it gets blinded by footwork when all of a sudden it comes down to where's the realness? Where's the activity of you doing your craft at a level that goes uh, and exceeds everyone else? Because if you're real, Smart people would say, I want to document this so people know what happened. No different than a contractor when he says, look at this beautiful house I built. Look at the work. Oh, I did this. Here's my guys. Here's my team. Here's the concrete. Here's the electrical. Makes sense. Let's go, let's go on. Think about what I just said. If you, like, uh, if you like, I will send you the proper cable in do-it-yourself kit form for free. Just let me know the length of cable you need. Thank you, sir, for letting me know and your support. And once again, this was... I, I had no idea he would send this. This is very nice of him to do because many people out there think that my videos are just bullshit or I'm just, you know, trying to pick people apart. Oh, you never say nice things and this and that. No, I say honest things. And sometimes honest things hurt people's feelings. I don't give a fuck. What I do give a fuck about is people getting screwed. That's not right. I wouldn't want it done to me. And if I go to buy a cable from someone because my competence with this field isn't what it should be, then this person portrays themselves as a professional in any capacity. I openly, in good faith, give them my money. I expect to get the cable in the sense that it's built properly. So why talk more? Let's see if what I'm saying is accurate. We'll come over here to Pawn CNC site, and we're going to look at a spindle package for 720 bucks. He shows you all the little diagrams. And then we scroll down, and oh my, what do we see over here? It says, all wiring shielded from interference. Hold on. Wait for it. Here's the cable that that gentleman sent me. And uh, you tell me, where's the shield drain, guys? Either end. What we do see is mass exposure of tin braided copper, which is the shield. Now, anyone that's worked with tin braided copper, myself in general, will tell you those little braids of copper, the ends are very sharp. Sharp enough to go in your foot if, God forbid, you step on them in your shop. Ask me how I know. Do you really think that protruding through the spindle cables casing cannot go into one of those terminals, once again, that's supplying power and potentially cause a dead short? And if you guys don't believe me, trust me, it will and can happen. This is completely unsafe. This should not have any exposed Tim Brady copper. The other thing I want you guys to pay attention to is this gentleman did not remove any of the heat shrink here, and I don't expect him to, but I am going to say this. The odds of these all these terminals being soldered perfectly from overseas in bulk capacity is probably 95%, maybe to five, that these would actually be even close to being correct in terms of using proper solder, proper flux, and being properly filled with solder to the capacity they should for structural integrity. Now, once again, I'm not speaking in terms of what if, I've looked at purchasing cables overseas in bulk, and after I saw what I got, I said, no, I wouldn't accept it. I'm not going to pass it on to you. And guess what? I took a loss. Right. That's what business owners do. To me, I'd rather take the loss than give it to you. Because you know what would happen? It would ruin my name, <clears throat> number one, and it makes me look inferior. We don't do that. I won't do it. Instead, 
I'll portray this. And you know what's funny? In all these videos, you can say a lot for all these guys that are fanboys. What you can't say is I've ever put the company down. I don't have to. This is their work. This is their work. I'm not putting them down. I'm showing you. That's why I love being a contractor. You can't hide what you can do. When you start posting stuff online, just like in your career, whatever that may be, you'll know if something's right or something's wrong or someone's bullshitting you. You do it long enough, you're like, okay, this is full of shit. Look at it. Are you happy with this? 720 bucks. You paid in good faith. This is what you got. It's not even built correctly. How do you feel? Hard to argue with that kind of logic. So I'm telling you guys, be careful. And I want to hear what you think.